And welcome to episode 750. What? Of Hard Factor. That's right. You heard that right. What? Um, uh, it is Monday, August 16th, 2021. Thank you for cheating on the news with us. I'm Will. We got Pat and Mark. Wes is off for 750, but don't buy a thousand. We'll get every, but we'll get all four of us on by for a, for a milestone episode. I think that that's the plan. By episode 750 is not big enough for Wes. No, nah, I mean, you got to you, you got to have a lot of pull to get Wes right now. Yeah, he's in high demand. So <laughs> he's <hot>. um, <laughs> <laughs> but congrats, fellas. 750. Congratulations Way to, go. to you. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats well, to you. Yeah. What a long, strange trip it's been. Um, it's going to get stranger today. we got a lot of crazy ass news. We're t- having a big old cup of coffee in Afghanistan, uh, <laughs> taking it to Haiti and other international hotbeds, and then finishing up with a McDonald's lawsuit. Oh, you're going to love this. So uh, that one story we did about the McFlurry machines. Mm. Yeah. Got, mm. got a follow up. Uh, and um, let's just say things might be looking good. <laughs> Oh, good. good for us, for the, the McDonald's consumer? fans, and good for the little guy. McFlurry consumers? Yep. Ooh. You think it might have been that Instagram video that had 700,000 views that pushed the needle to get this this ball rolling? I said I said it had a million in the story. I'm going to cover Oh, good. About, okay. I'm oh, sorry. I, I, well, I total million, between but... yeah, all platforms, clearly a yeah. million. I'd um, say so. It's that or people love fast food shit, and that's why we got to fast food lightning round at the end Not hell just yeah mcdonald's mm. we're going we're going to taco bell we're going to chipotle we're going all over the place look at that wow let's it's do a it thick thick episode like seven c's um so but yeah as mark said let's do it let's just hop right in time for a cup of coffee in the big time yeah cup of coffee in the big time holidays history trending news and of course holidays are up first it's august 16th which means it's Bennington Battle Day in the state of Vermont. It's right. Cupcake of Day. Hmm? Of course. What's that, Mark? Oh, yeah, of course. of course. Yeah. The notable Bennington Battle in the state of Vermont. Uh, Cupcake Day for uh, only some people. I have no idea who that's for. Uh, Joe Miller's Joke Day. National Airborne Day. National Bratwurst Day. National Roller Coaster Day. Pretty good one. National Rum yeah. Day. Great one. Uh, Stay Home With Your Kids Day. Surveillance Day. Weird that those are on the same day and true love forever day. I got a couple edits. Mm-hmm. Do you mind if I uh, can you put Go it back it. up real quick? Sure. What edits you I, got? I think we shift it to natural airborne virus day and mm-hmm. stay at home with your kids year. There you go. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, it's just a celebration of COVID. Yes. there you go. Yeah, yes. A couple August shifts. 16th. Who's Joe Miller? Why does he have a fucking day and us not know. be our day hasn't gone through yet? It's a paperwork thing. Must be. Must be. Must be uh, roller coaster and rum day, though. Those being on the same day, that's the opposite of COVID. That's a that's a breathing in everybody's face kind of day. You don't want to mix You're... those, especially <laughs> not on uh, National Custodian Day. I agree with Pat, though. It should be John Miller joke day because uh, that's my grandfather's name, and he told a lot of good jokes. So screw yeah. you, oh. Joe Miller. All right. Very John Miller. Miller. We'll yeah. back it up. Yeah. We're changing that one too. amendment. Sorry. It's John Miller joke day officially. Yeah. So. All right. Someone send those in. They do it. Do it. Get get on the paperwork, everybody. Okay. Today in history, August sixteenth, uh, in nineteen fifty four, the first issue of Sports Illustrated was released. Um, and in twenty twenty one, something historical will definitely take place with the formation of a new nation in Afghanistan. Uh, but we'll get deeper to that in a minute. Um, let's move along to the trending news. Number five. Crypto is having a good comeback despite uh, infrastructure bill looming. So that's pretty good. Check your wallets. If you're like me, you hadn't been because you were depressed, but they're not as bad right now. If you just well, they got good there. for a second there. Yeah. Mm. Did, did it ever hit 50, Pat? Bitcoin? Oh, Bitcoin will go back up to 60, in my opinion, uh, yeah. as long as there's not some sort of regulation that comes in that totally shits on it. I mean, right. It's it's just an ebb and a flow. But I'll tell you where the money is right now. I haven't been doing it because all my stuff's locked up. But a lot of homies have been um, weekly flipping Ethereum. And I looked at the chart hmm. and it's just fish in a barrel it, every week for the last five weeks. It's done the exact same thing. It's in a dip and then a pump and then a dip and then a pump. So, oh, interesting. Something so to think about. Stacking Ethereum. Stacking nice. ETH. Nice. It's a good one to stack. Uh, number four. Start of the English Premier League season uh, was fun for some. Leeds got absolutely smoked by Manchester United, five to one. Oof, RIP to all of us. Um, 
Arsenal lost to a brand new team that's just brand new to the Premier League. The Bees. League. The Bees beat them. On what a day for the Bees, right? The Bees down, yeah. <laughs> what a huge day. I mean, could you yeah. imagine? Arsenal's like easily one of the most recognizable and, and dominant teams oh, yeah. in the EPL. Biggest fan base, yeah. Right. The Bees got them. They got stung by the Bees. Oh, man, that's awesome. One of the bigger fan Brent, bases. Brent, Brentingford, Brentingham. Like, no one's even heard Something of the town like the Bees are yeah. from, yeah. I mean, but... I, but, but beat Arsenal. <laughs> That's all yeah, that matters. we don't really have that. Uh, no, I mean, no other sport really has what they have because there's so many leagues because there's such an interest in in soccer football over there. Mm. So maybe that's why we don't have it here. But you got to admit, there's nothing cooler than the relegation situation where it's like if you're loving cool. a team that's in the equivalent of the minor leagues. And if they do good enough, they can go up to the big leagues like yeah. the bees pubs, bro, over the weekend, you, you know. NFL that was Le- like- that was Leeds last year, bro. That was because Leeds came up last year. That's why there's a lot of buzz around them. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, NFL should start like a second <laughs> league that plays in the off season of the NFL that you could get relegated to. Like that's thing. well. I don't know if you could do that. Yeah, I feel like but the NFL, you could kill someone. Complex. Somebody <laughs> would have to play year round, right? If the team did well, they'd have to play year round. In the, in the NFL, the, if the competition gets too out of hand, people are going to break their necks and shit. Yeah, you know, that's that's little, true. Yeah, you do really different. have a shelf a life. In <laughs> yeah, football. a lot of wear and tear. <laughs> yeah. But I do. I always want more football. And we'll get to that next, uh, number three. But uh, finishing up EPL, uh, Harry Kane uh, for Tottenham striker, obviously England's best player. Uh, he got left on the bench for Tottenham, but they still beat Man City Whoa. in their opener. So, and they beat Man City. Yeah. One Whoa. Nothing. Yeah. So Tottenham off with a big hot start. Um, and I think it's like a contract hot Spurs, situation. Hot yeah. start. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Man City picked up Jack Grealish, the guy who was the star from Aston Villa that has the long hair and kind of plays. Yeah. He's yeah. Didn't help. I think, they, day I think they won last year too. Well, it they sounds did. like there's a ton of sports in the buzz, which is great. I mean, the cup of mm-hmm. beat him, um, but. Just putting it in there, I do want to talk really quick about. Um, I have some sports news too. So, just at some point, mm-hmm. could be that yeah. after the three. Yeah. yeah, sure. I mean, do you want to just uh, squint number uh, three and a half is Pat's sports. It update. doesn't need a full number. I'm just saying it's the greatest yeah. time of the year, guys, because it's literally World Series time. Uh, oh, which is college easily World Series. My, college, it's uh, just, Little League World Series. Sorry. It's just my favorite fucking sporting event uh, on the planet. It's just, I mean, it's just fun. It's just fucking fun. Because it's boys or what's the. No, just because it's like draw. That's, that's the level of playing that I stopped at. Right. Ah. So like that's, that's takes you back to the glory days. So I can really imagine myself being there. Just watching the kids have fun is, is dope. <laughs> I, I yeah. love it. I, I also love, like, gotta watch out, cuties get. guy. With yeah. the- <laughs> I'm a father, man. Okay. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Don't put that on me because I fucking like the little who wants here. That's y'all. That's y'all. You know who problem. likes? You know who else likes the little word series? Is every Canadian in our Discord. Yeah, it's big time. It's huge. It's huge and in it, Canada. It's, apparently, it's it is actual it is World event. Series, man. Yeah. Our our World Series, the World Series, is just Canada and America. This is an actual World Series, bro. They should bring that. Well, I guess that's the Olympics, right? For baseball. Yeah. I guess. 16 cool. or some shit. Mm. Good luck to all teams. Yes. Good luck to all of you. I, I like the infographics where like the kids say something funny. You know? also, yeah. They're like favorite, favorite actor, Johnny Sins or whatever. Yeah, like, that's that's great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's always some kid that just that shoots through puberty and then he is dominant. Like oh, it's usually yeah. a pitcher. He's up there with a mustache. Big that's- boy. That's the only part of the World Series I like is when there's like a kid that's way bigger than everyone else. Which every like, team has to have. Basically. That's the, that's the usually best. Cult. Or like, <laughs> remember the one kid he was like super fat a couple of years ago and everyone loved him because he was just a big beefy boy and he was real mm-hmm. likable. Like that's the uh, other than that, it's it's garbage. The kids suck. It's not. But dude, I, oh my god, it's it's one of the most enjoyable sporting. Yeah, okay. It's one of the more enjoyable ones. But let's move on to the most enjoyable one at number three, the NFL, which is back. Yes. Uh, most enjoyable, in my opinion. Justin Fields uh, had a big debut. There was a fight at the Rams stadium, Rams Chargers, and uh, preseason is back in general. Um, so I finally got to take my wife to uh, the casino steakhouse on Saturday night. Oh, yeah. uh, got a little babysitting from the in-laws. That was very nice. Uh, the sports book was packed. He, despite having to wear masks, wall to wall, packed with people betting on Cowboys Cardinals <laughs> preseason. <laughs> It's so, tough, man. I, yeah. had, I have some <laughs> some stuff in my some cash in my account left over. And uh, I was just looking at it. I was like, can I really like you want the action? But it's like, can you people are taking no smart it. bet? There's no <laughs> fucking smart bet. People are taking it. Everybody's glued to the screen. There's, there's no, no smart yeah. bet. Like, yeah. What are you going to do? You're just looking at the lines. You're like, ah, but <laughs> it's just what a scene. But it just proves that football's back. People are hungry 
for the yeah. football uh, and the people who are hungry in Chicago uh, got filled up nicely with Justin Fields having a huge debut. I think he had a two touchdowns. Um, yeah, uh, they over they overdid that one. I mean, he had an eight yard run and a 30 yard pass where the guy was I mean. wide open and he went 14 yeah. for 20. It wasn't like 20 for 20. OK, so, so you're saying pump, pump the, brakes. the brakes, pump the brakes on Justin Fields. Yeah. OK, uh, but more importantly, a bunch of fat guys like <laughs> like seven fat guys got into a fight. Uh, at the Los Angeles Chargers versus Rams preseason yes. game uh, in the like new LA stadium. This is going to happen yeah. every week. Every Thousands week. of these. <laughs> yeah. After the, like, all the lockdowns we've been through, this is going to happen. If you don't want to get punched in the face, don't go to the upper deck of an NFL game. <laughs> they were just all like, you couldn't even tell what the argument was or like if it was over the teams, because they were all different, supporting <laughs> different That's teams just... and just fucking like started throwing haymakers on each other. Were they, uh, was it like a fat club or they just happened to be fat? No, it was like one fat guy was like, <laughs> like being Craig held club. back by another fat guy no. talking like to a group of fat guys. Yeah. It's it awesome. like if we all went to the game together and got in a brawl with another group. Another of friends, a, like, a rival group of fat yes. guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, yeah. Excellent video. I would have I would have uh, brought it into the show, but it's just, we got we got too much. OK, uh, we got too much. Got to keep going. Number two. Um, the Haiti earthquake, which you will learn more about that tragedy in the TikTok international moment. I got you. I'll keep the darkness going after <laughs> yeah. number one. Okay. After we move on to number one, which today, of course, is Afghanistan. So if you uh, are living under a rock, um, the Taliban is back in charge of the entire country of Afghanistan. Uh, this happened very swiftly on Sunday, August 15th, uh, which, of course, is significantly earlier. Uh, than the date of uh, 9-11 that President Joe Biden had promised the world in July. That's when the U.S. would actually withdraw from Afghanistan. Um, so, uh, like, he, J Biden at the time actually said that he thought that the Afghan government was going to be able to hold the Taliban off entirely. Um, and they did. That's didn't. what we said about Man United. Basically, yes. He was a, like a, he was like a leads better. Yeah. Um, uh, and and it didn't work out just like with the Man U game. Their president fled uh, the country as soon as the Taliban took the capital of Kabul on Sunday. So he just like immediately got in a jet and flew away, uh, leaving, you know, the, the That's remaining a bad side. U.S. forces and the uh, Afghanis on the ground to just deal with the Taliban taking over the country entirely. You know, what sucks. Yeah, worse that was about a bad that? Side. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was supposed to go, I guess, like the initial meeting with the Taliban that the U.S. did was in Qatar. I yes. think he was supposed to go to Qatar on Sunday to do further peace talks. Oh, right. No, instead yeah. Instead jetted. Like, Correct. Like he was supposed to leave the country either way to go to talk about no, peace. Yeah, but this instead wasn't, he went to Uzbekistan. This, this yes, was a flea Pat. instead of a business trip. Yeah, yeah, Pat, the original plan, I believe, with both Trump and Biden was that it was supposed to be some sort of like shared power thing. The existing the Taliban know, like, don't Afghani share fucking right. power. The, instead, Taliban what happened? Come on. Instead, what happened, as we discussed on Friday's pod? The Taliban were just advancing unchecked, completely, you know, no resistance and taking over every single province in the country. Um, and as we discussed on Friday, the Biden administration started sending additional troops uh, to protect the U.S. evacuation effort. Um, but and as of the time of taping this podcast, the additional troop level is at six thousand um, uh, that he's added over the weekend. Uh, basically, they're stationed at the Kabul airport trying to get people out alive. All commercial flights are they have just been like canceled. forming a line around the airport to make sure that like a, it doesn't get attacked. Basically, probably a perimeter around yeah, the runway. Yeah, like a perimeter around the so runway that, to get so them off they, the air. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that they're able to fly planes and get people out of the country. That's um, terrible. All, all commercial flights are canceled. So um, local residents, good luck on that. Only military travel allowed as of right now. Um, and as always, of course, you know, with Biden having a tough weekend, uh, Jimmy Carter also trended because. People are comparing this Biden evacuation fiasco to the Carter hostage situation in Iran. Uh, but this is really a lot more like Gerald Ford's evacuation situation Saigon. as the Viet Cong closed in on Saigon. Yeah. Uh, yeah after yeah. American ground forces had left the country and they had also taken away air cover there. Um, that, too, required a daring escape from a war with questionable origins that lasted way too long across multiple administrations when it uh, shouldn't have had to be that way. Uh, same as this. I read a great book uh, from a CIA agent who was trying to get at who was getting out of Saigon and he was trying to get his his uh, 
lady who is a Vietnamese lady out too. It's mm, it's pretty luck, interesting. Right? The total clusterfuck because they're having to burn stuff. They're having to destroy documents, and I'm pretty sure it happened. Which like they were. They were burning stuff at the right. They yeah. were burning stuff at the Kabul in- embassy, which is now completely evacuated via helicopter on the roof. We'll get to more of that later. Uh, apparently, we didn't learn anything from Saigon though. Uh, the Viet Cong went on to use American allies who were left and stranded in Vietnam uh, for slave labor until their deaths. It remains oh. to be seen what will happen in Afghanistan to those who have oh. aided the U.S. over our 20 year occupation. But there are videos of killings in the streets, uh, flooding the Internet already reports right. of beheadings in the streets um, by the Taliban. So they're just already killing people in the streets. That's what the, the reports yeah. are as of the time of taping. Uh, the flag at the U.S. Embassy is down. Uh, There are videos of of the Taliban flying U.S. helicopters that got abandoned in the country and claiming massive weapon caches that also got abandoned in the country because we had to, you know, tuck tail and run uh, faster than we anticipated. You know, in the end, the Taliban definitely won the country of Afghanistan and they are in total control now uh, simply because the war effort in that country was unsustainable from the start, it seems like. Um, Yeah, it's. I think the number total 86 billion. And uh, what we do know for sure is that we tried to set up a similar style military from day one that we have here with the Afghan military. That was our goal. And uh, 20 years later, $86 billion spent. And we were not able to do that probably because it was not possible to do yeah, that. Not possible. Well, and it relies were... a lot on um, air cover and espionage, I think. And, then, and we took away a lot of their supplies, right? Like uh, the, the, air, the air supplies and stuff like they weren't, ready well yeah to, i mean to fight the taliban yeah I mean, and we it, might have cut their legs off from them the government happens to be one of the most corrupt like the government that we set up right was severely severely corrupt and they also the puppet government was corrupt they were not brought to the <laughs> table during the negotiations that we had right. with the taliban in february which is like well, those so closed door the closed door ones that the taliban sometimes right. showed up to sometimes didn't and promised so that was yeah, yeah so yeah. that so we that talked was, about like uh, six months ago or yeah mm-hmm. February 2020 is that yeah. when it was so Very Biden good. go ahead Pat oh I was gonna say I didn't know this but they had those negotiations between the Taliban and uh Pompeo's folks right at a place called the shark s-h-a-r-q which is like a high-end hotel and cutter where mm-hmm. like there's just like hot bikini clad ladies laying around and then just Taliban dudes cruising through I mean that makes sense if yeah, you're gonna how horny you're, with those guys if you're gonna made, negotiate the Taliban yeah. sheets yeah made the services. shark the shark makes sense uh, nuts. Yeah. let's get to that though Pompeo involvement so while Biden is not the only US president who's involved here guys obviously Bush too started the war in Afghanistan after 9-11. Obama escalated the war in Afghanistan to its largest point ever when he sent in 30,000 additional troops. Uh, Trump negotiated an end to the war with the now Taliban leader who he had freed from prison in Pakistan uh, with Mike Pompeo's help. That's what Pat's uh, talking about there. And now Biden completely botched the withdrawal after extending the stay beyond the May 1st deadline that Trump had agreed to with the Taliban. But fellas, the craziest part is probably the last month because it's hard to believe what happened on August 15th, 2021, when you listen to this July, clip. July 15th. No, just August. What happened on, on July August 15th, 15th 2021, when the Taliban completely took oh, over you're Kabul. What happened yesterday, yeah, yeah. Right. What, what happened on August 15th is hard to yeah. imagine when you listen to this clip of President Biden just 39 days ago on July 8th, 2021. Takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, it is not. Because you have the Afghan troops have 300,000 well-equipped, as well-equipped as any army in the world, and an Air Force against something like 75,000 Taliban. Okay, so It not is possible. not inevitable. Mr. President, thank you very much. Your own intelligence community has assessed that the Afghan government will likely collapse. That is not true. Is it? Can you please clarify what they told you about whether that will happen? Happened in two days. That is not true. They did not. They didn't. Did not reach that conclusion. So, what is the level of confidence that they have that it will not collapse? The Afghan government and leadership has to come together. They clearly have the capacity to sustain the government in place. 
And do you see any parallels between this withdrawal and what happened in Vietnam with some people feeling... With None whatsoever. Right? Zero. What you had is you had entire brigades breaking through the gates of our embassy. Six, if I'm not mistaken. The Taliban is not the, South, the North Vietnamese army. They're not, they're not remotely comparable in terms of capability. There's going to be no circumstance where you see people being lifted off the roof of a embassy in the, of Jesus. the United States yeah, well, there's, from yeah, Afghanistan. Yeah. It is there's not pictures at all of that. comparable. Yeah. So the question now is, where do they go from here? That, the jury is still out. <laughs> the likelihood there's going to be the Taliban overrunning everything and owning the whole country is highly unlikely. Okay, so um, uh, basically everything that Biden predicted um, 39 Sorry. days ago was 100% incorrect. Man, um, I want to follow up with, well, do you have a statement from Saturday? Uh, I, I I don't have a statement when he when he uh, ordered a thousand additional troops he he made a statement from Saturday uh, I don't I don't have exactly what he said but then he also made ordered a, an additional thousand troops on Sunday didn't make a statement so, so where is he and what what where is he's he? at Camp What's David on? so he's at Camp David he's he's on vacation when? uh, till Wednesday is when it's scheduled to end so here's what I'm super confused about right because the statement on Saturday I'll I'll read part of it. I have a quote from it so uh -huh. this is what he said on Saturday he said. The Trump deal, because Pompeo and Trump's administration did the deal in um, February 2020, right? Left the Taliban in the strongest position well, mil yeah. militarily since 01, right? And left him few choices to follow through on the deal with a brief extension of the Air Forces. And okay, so yeah, the out. deal was originally scheduled to end May 1st. He, he extended it to September 11th. That's what he was referring to. Right, there. right. Or so what he's saying is here were my choices. Either get them out with an extension or ramp up our presence and send more American troops to fight in to fight once again. In another, well, in why couldn't kind of he have just conflict. done a withdrawal accurately? And now, not, if, and if that quote had if he had put that quote out. Before his weird ass quote that you just played, like I, what I'm saying is like, you can't now say he was put in an impossible position. There's no doubt about it. And we can get it. He executed but, it. Horribly, but what the fuck still. are you doing? There, there was a pro. Uh, uh, the uh, New York Times correspondent did an interview with NPR in uh, March, essentially saying, like, there's no way he'll get past May. Like, can't happen in May. Everyone knows that. Everyone, Everyone's cool with that. But. Uh, Except the Taliban. Something. The Taliban was not cool with that. Well, right. It, and they said that. And they said, we are going to fuck were up pissed. your plans. They were if standing, you don't. They were, yeah. Since May, they've been furious. And but Biden's been ignoring them, obviously, as as is pointed out by these videos. But so we, they haven't killed. They haven't been killing Americans since met. I mean, since since the uh, the deal was done. Uh, my point is, like, Biden knew. No, but the, but they to took the, the entire out. country in a matter of a fraction of time that well, he anticipated. It, it was, was a hard it was a really hard position. But a few things like I think it probably could have been done better. Also, cancel your fucking, oh, cancel your fucking <laughs> vacation. Yes, yeah, your need, fucking vacation. Probably. Why aren't you in DC? Here, why aren't you in DC? Like having like uh like press conferences or like well, what is he doing in Camp There's David? American lives in yeah. jeopardy, and he's oh, big he's, time. He's vacation. He's and, and, and and people are getting executed in the streets that 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 helped that helped us. Like yeah, spent there's estimated years eighty eight thousand allies. The whole war is not left. on Joe Biden, but this particular piece of the war is on Joe Biden, and he's on vacation. Right. The, the right. war, I think, this, is, this is more atrocious than West sitting out 750. Barely. It, but more. it is. It is more egregious. The, the more war, egregious. the war, I think, needed to end in a lot of people's eyes, but it did not need to end like this. I think right. everybody could probably no, agree. Agreed. Secretary of State A. Blinken is trying to say it's nothing like Saigon uh, because the U.S. flushed bin Laden and Al Qaeda out of the country back after 9-11. And so we therefore won the war, according to him. But if that's the case, why'd we stay 10 to 20 extra years and then pull our air cover before evacuating our forces and the allies who helped us who would prefer asylum over staying there to deal with the Taliban? How come that wasn't the exit plan that you would have learned from Saigon? Right. But um, I, so I, I'm more looking at like, OK, essentially. Based, so the reason I brought up that the Afghan government was not in the deal with the Taliban, right? Essentially, everyone knew that thereby there was no chance of it working. If you, if yeah, you take, but he fucked this yeah. withdrawal up. It so doesn't matter. It still doesn't. Yeah. It's 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 both. Well, let me finish without without assuming my point. Let me finish without assuming my point. So if if he knew that, right, which he did, Biden, uh -huh. what the fuck? Right. Like yeah, if everyone yeah. knew the Trump deal was report, failed to begin with. And I Trump think there was, was a report that said it would happen within 90 days, Pat. They didn't think it would happen this quick, but I think they all assumed the intelligence assumed this would happen. 
It's well, okay. So another thing I found out, which I didn't know, essentially, as soon he as the Trump deal was done, badly. as soon as the Trump deal was done, the second the Trump deal was done, they started planning their takeover. So they started. They didn't. They didn't kill any Americans. That's what the Trump which did. Which Biden didn't suspect. Apparently, no, he knew. That's what I'm saying. He knew. But no, I'm I think the, out, that's what I'm saying. I think the intelligence recently 500. said within 90 days it was going to be this. I, mean, they, I don't think they thought. So it was he just vastly days. underestimated them. No, he's yes, they underestimated. Vastly underestimated. They, uh, they, they did underestimate the Taliban, and you could Completely. hear in his. You could hear in his speech. He's like, Taliban's got nowhere near the capabilities of the North Vietnamese Army. It's like, what? They <laughs> fucked up. No, okay, I want to point. Uh, that's up. the commander in chief. He's not not living up. To, so they to, know to that this. moniker. With, he knew this. With Biden, that statement 39 year, days ago. Biden's admin knew this. The, the day that the Trump deal was done, right? The Taliban stopped killing Americans and started assassinating the educated class in Afghanistan. 500 people were assassinated between t- February 2020 and today. They started taking outposts. Like they started immediately taking outposts from not from uh, not where our troops were, but where the Afghan military. Right. Was. So it's like they knew this shit was coming. The Trump deal was doomed from the beginning. Like. And, and the whole war was like, get our fucking people out of there the right way. Yeah. So don't fuck up the withdrawal. So right, don't right. fuck up the entire extraction. He tried to make it a fucking publicity stunt by making the withdrawal date 9-11 instead of actually running the operation correctly. I hope President Biden has the answers when he finally addresses the nation. As of the time of taping, as we've discussed, uh, he has decided to stay silent on vacation at Camp David. Man. And that's today's cup oh, of coffee might, in the big time. Be, they might be playing like a killer game of Monopoly over there. Probably Just so. from an optics Those can last bro. a couple days. Get your ass Risk, back in maybe. the fucking chair. There are our people are at the airport, not just our soldiers. They're scared right? for their lives. Yes. But he our, has our, blown it, this it's a, entirely. The, the day the our withdrawal. soldiers are, are redeploying to Afghanistan, every single veteran. From, at his you know, orders. Every while he's in Camp David. went there is like pulling their fucking hair out, being like, why did, why did this happen? Certainly... There will be much more on this topic in the weeks yes. to come. Yes. And that was today's Cup of Coffee in the Big Time, which was brought to you today by one of our favorite sponsors, Talkspace. Fellas, mental health is wildly important to your life, and Talkspace are the people to talk about about that topic, your mental health. The world is racing back to normal and starting uh, to meet up in person again. But after a year plus that we've all had in lockdown and whatever other COVID stuff you've had to do, Getting back to feeling normal takes time. If you're like me, you may have some burnout, uh, a little anxiety, uh, feel a little off from the whole pandemic in general. And that's why I seek support from Talkspace. Uh, We all talk to our friends when we're experiencing issues, but they don't always give the advice that we need. Getting unbiased feedback from and advice from a licensed professional can be refreshing and actually rewarding. And Talkspace can give that to you. Talkspace makes it easy to match with a licensed therapist and schedule live video sessions all from the comfort of your device. You can start messaging your therapist the same day you sign up. You get connected and make it simple and fast uh, to secure the help for your mental health that you need. Uh, Whether you're experiencing depression, anxiety, or other problems, Talkspace is the number one online therapy platform to help you sort through any issue. Start feeling better with a single message. Match with a licensed therapist when you go to Talkspace.com and get 100 bucks off your first month when you use the promo code HARDFACTOR, all one word. That's 100 bucks off when you use the code HARDFACTOR at Talkspace.com. All right. Well, I mean, this is a pretty depressing episode to go with your Monday commute. And why? Well, I'm not going to ruin that theme. Let's stick with the theme in the TikTok International. It's time for the TikTok International moment. Let's keep nice. it rolling. Let's keep it dark. Bring uh, me the depression, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> over the weekend in Haiti, looks like now over 1,300 people have died from multiple earthquakes. Uh, on Saturday, a massive 7.2 earthquake struck the southwest part of the country uh, seen here. This is where the epicenter hit, southwest peninsula down there. Um, and boom, big, big, big old earthquake, right? Uh, and then uh, it devastated that area in the Southwest Peninsula, Peninsula, leveling grocery stores, damaging hospitals, blocking and damaging roads, and snapping water lines everywhere. And mm. then a couple hours later, a second 5.2, 5.9 magnitude earthquake <laughs> struck uh, near the town of Petit Tru de Nips, uh, leveling a hotel uh, and several buildings. Here's like an image of some of the damage done. Not oh, good. Um, this is a month after the country's president was assassinated and 10 years after another massive 7.0 or higher earthquake killed potentially 100,000 Haitians. Uh, right. Because that hit closer to like the big cities in 2010. Yes. I so, mean, oh, the epicenter graphic crazy. you put up literally is four times larger than the country itself. 
No, so the, see how big the country is? It's this whole thing. That's the bottom. That's the, that's the bottom, bottom peninsula. peninsula. Oh, Southern I see. Peninsula. Okay, okay. So yeah, did, yeah. did the DR Southwest. get messed up too? Uh, no, 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 no. But but it will in a second, Pat, because uh, uh, <laughs> no jokes on this one today. I hope you guys get some much re- needed relief. Oh, no, wait, what's that? A tropical storm is supposed to hit Haiti and the DR today. Uh, tropical storm Grace is supposed to hit on Monday. Here's an image of Grace about to destroy the Caribbean. Um, and it's going to, you know, cause massive flooding in a place where all the buildings are on in the ground so that's not good it's uh gonna eventually come to us as well potentially like texas area oh, wow but no so. luckily for texas haiti's gonna take the brunt of it you know they Haiti's will. just gonna um wow that's that's terrible for you so, like a tight so. end blocking for a running back coming out of the eye formation what the Man, t- Haiti- hopefully the hopefully they do a tebow level job Oh, how did Tebow do? You got to no. That they, they, people were making fun of his blocking. That's what I'm saying. Hopefully they get they don't actually great. hit the hurricane. Yeah, right. get out of the way, Haiti. <laughs> yeah, do a oh, Tebow I see block. what you say. Oh, that was yeah, Haiti. Yeah, <laughs> barely mis- yeah. barely got in there. Um, <laughs> the yeah. game. So anyway, sorry, Haiti. We're hoping you know things get better for you. Uh, fuck it. Uh, I want you to take a look at a picture. There you go. You see that bloody face? Oh man, that guy got that? fucked up. Yeah. That's the face of a Taekwondo master going up against anyone else outside of a outside of a dojo <laughs> in a real life fight. Um, this is Jack Wooly. That's the same guy, uh, Jack Wally or Wooly, who became Ireland's first ever Taekwondo Olympian at Tokyo 2020, mm. uh, but certainly not the first Taekwondo black belt to get his ass kicked outside of a pub. Um, that's exactly what happened. To be fair, it wasn't an indoor planned one-on-one match with Jack versus a board of wood. So he was at a disadvantage from the start. Uh, but Jack claims it was a group of people that started just randomly violently attacking like him and his friends and other people when he left the Dublin restaurant after he had a few had dinner and a few drinks with friends. And it was a single punch to the face that leveled him and left him in this bloody mess. Whoa. One punch. The he saw it is- coming. Yeah, no matter what he know. says, you know it was the Taekwondo that caused this. Oh, yeah. Bragging yeah. about Taekwondo. Yeah, you know, he's well. like, I don't know why they did it. And yeah, <laughs> it's pretty clear why they did it. You talked just a little bit too much about your high flying skills related to your Taekwondo. In the restaurant, Lally. Well, Pat, to make matters much, much worse, Jack's mom took to the press to say that her son chose not to fight back. And they were, and those guys were lucky that he just he took the high road. Is <laughs> the his guy, mom is PR agent, too? Yes. Mm. This guy chose not to fight back. This guy who's absolutely not getting up from the ground uh, chose not to fight back. Yeah, he got knocked mom. out. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. What a what a blow that is for just the. <laughs> the Taekwondo industry saying yes. that he chose not to fight back. You know, like you, you, you have so many people. It's literally for self-defense. Like that was the perfect time to choose to use it. <laughs> so many dojo masters. That's when you're supposed to use industry. it. When angry mobs attacking innocent bystanders, you're supposed to whip out your Taekwondo. Yeah. Uh, here's Jack and his uh, Olympian athlete. I guess they didn't give him time to put all of his pads on. Um, he doesn't look menacing at all. Look at that. His, look at that Taekwondo his, outfit. Do they really yeah. need all that gear for it's Taekwondo? A lot of protect- <laughs> yeah, is that the <laughs> IT guy? Tech what is, he get? is it a car crash? Is, are they like test car <laughs> crash <laughs> test dummies? The IT guy weight class. What? A- <laughs> <laughs> he looks so nerdy, bro. Yeah his, yeah, his pads are like five times thicker than his spindly skinny arms. Like that's uh, how do they even tell great- who lands a hit with those pads? But that's got it. That's got it. <laughs> Range of motion's got to be down with that huge chest pad. Anyways, Jack will require plastic surgery to his lip, which is a very Taekwondo-like injury. A little plastic surgery and an ice pack. It's going to mend him back up. Um, so. <laughs> That's so bad for the bad sport, for man. Bad for Taekwondo. Yeah. Hey, I mean, it's obviously horrible he got attacked, and apparently five others ended up worse than him, which sucks. Hopefully they catch the assholes that were just beating people up and sending them to the hospital, Whoa. but just goes to show you that Taekwondo has zero practical use in a fight when a 22 year old olympian in his prime gets beaten up so badly with one punch that his mom has to defend him not right. great he mm-hmm. has to give his did he get a medal no oh well he's got to give his belt up <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh, at least he didn't get a medal yeah <laughs> we gotta, God. he's got to send that guy his belt right what if like, he was the gold medalist <laughs> that would have been the best oh speaking of taekwondo masters that have famously gotten their ass kicked by someone that prefers punching people in the face to spin kicks Jean-Claude Van Damme was recently tied to a $2 million jewelry heist. Uh, Van Damme was in Paris recently visiting an optometrist. How do you say that? The eye doctor? Optometrist. Optometrist. 
optometrist? Optim- oh, eye doctor? Both, yeah, they're both eye doctors. One's a surgeon, yeah. I believe. We'll say either one. This one says ophthalmologist. Uh, but as Van Damme likes to do, he made a flashy appearance and drew a large crowd of fans, right? Uh, and while the Parisians flocked to Van Damme snapping selfies with him and daring him to do the splits, a thief robbed a uh, Chomet jewelry store at knife point getting over two million dollars in goods and then he was able to leave and get on an electric scooter and flee the scene with zero eyewitnesses in the street because they were all flocking to van damme next door over um and he <laughs> so he just got him he got away because <laughs> everyone was with uh everyone was talking to dennis rodman's double team co-star that's amazing the office yeah. he's definitely got to be in on it right what's that he's got to well so maybe um do you guys know the famous ass beating i'm talking about van damme receiving no yeah i knew he got his ass kicked but didn't didn't F, like also uh what's bruce lee got his ass kicked on set too right that's i don't it. think bruce lee got no his that was from the set. that was from the tarantino movie yeah don't that stuntman we, claims he kicked his ass on it, set. that's no. very muddy waters whether no. that happened or not but this okay. is this is true so van damme uh came in to cross paths with the uh, his former bodyguard and the main villain of the double team movie I, I mentioned earlier, Mickey Rourke's, and that ex uh, Hells Angels member is Chuck Zito. He was bodyguard for both of them, and I guess him and Van Dam did not get along when he was bodyguarding for Van Dam, so he quit. And he met up with Van Dam randomly at Scores nightclub in New York City, and Van Dam was not allowed by his opponent to do a jumping twirly kick. He just got punched in the face repeatedly by Zito and got knocked out uh, in the club. So run that yeah. by me one more time. So Chuck Zito, who was the bad guy in double team, because no. He- no, 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 Mickey Rourke was the bad guy on double team. Okay. All and right. Chuck Zito was a bodyguard for both Mickey Rourke and Van Damme at different oh. parts. Oh, uh, weird. Okay. Yes. And so Van Damme went, rolled up into the club with Mickey Rourke and some people. And Chuck Zito, who hated Van Damme at this point because he quit, sees Mickey Rourke, who he's friends with, and Van Damme. And he goes up and tries to squash their beef. And then Van Damme's like, yo, okay, Chuck Zito, cool guy. And then he goes in the bathroom and proceeds to talk shit about Chuck Zito. And a bouncer came out that was also like a Hells Angel guy. He's like, Chuck, this guy's running his mouth. So Chuck gave him one last chance came over and he goes you, you want to cut you want to stop talking shit about me he goes oh no chuck zito the big tough guy and then chuck zito just beat the shit out of him oh zito. yeah man <laughs> shouldn't he have known though yeah here's yeah. a picture yeah his bot here's a picture of chuck zito yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that chuck zito looks like every long island uncle yeah who, and, who's way into and, steroids and well you, into his 60s chuck zito did like 10 Great years point. in the pen like you, you could tell chuck zito's a big guy too from his picture yeah. and van damme's probably pretty small like he, he like he's he's yoked but he's probably a small guy okay like, we go spinny kick to spinny kick yeah no <laughs> no uh they did end up catching the jewel thief who was headed to Germany, um, but it was no thanks to Time Cop over there. Right, you know, man, only man. roundhouses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at Zito's IMDb, and his acting career pretty much of, co- exclusively revolves around the guys he's hanging out with that are actual actors, like JCVD. Like you, yeah. like you can't do that. That's such a bad move. Like we get it. You're in the club because you're a tough guy, but you can't use your tough guy shit against the guys that got you in the club, or you are out of the club. Ah, he just he said he wrote he wrote a book and he said, I got along with every single one of my clients except Van Damme. Except- Van Damme is a scumbag, piece of shit, arrogant cocksucker that was like mean to like Damn. everyone on the street. He goes, most of the people I worked for knew they were fortunate to be famous and were very lucky. Van Damme thought the world owed him something. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, tracks, that tracks so much. <laughs> You can imagine that so easily with Van Damme's uh, like movie personality. Give me, bring me the, uh, bring me the strippers, bring me the champagne. Uh, hey guys, dinner time can be chaotic, but with Freshly, it's easy. Their chefs take care of your meals a few nights a week and take the pressure off you. Freshly offers chef-made, nutrient-packed, delicious meals uh, delivered fresh to your door. No cooking required. Grocery shopping and cooking can be a pain in the butt, especially right now. But with Freshly, you don't have to. Your meals arrive cooked and fresh every week so you can uh, keep your fridge stocked and skip the trip to the store. Ordering is easy. Just visit Freshly.com and choose from over 30 delicious, satisfying, better for you meals like steak, peppercorn, sausage, baked penne, or their chicken pesto bowl. Mm, they got a chicken parmesan. They got they got a, a ton of good stuff. They've got some mashed potatoes oh, in there. Fantastic mac and cheese, and yeah. all of them are good. And they're all pretty. They're all pretty healthy, and they they fit every yeah. like diet uh, dietary. Healthier need, no than problem. I'd cook on my own. That's for sure. 
<laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and now, and I'm drinking out of a Sonic cup. Whoops. Uh, and now our <laughs> listeners can try freshly for just $6 and 16 cents per meal. Stop searching the internet for healthy food near me every night and start living life freshly. Your meals are always delivered fresh, never frozen, and are ready to heat and enjoy in just three minutes with new meals added each week. Freshly brings the convenience of chef made nutritionist designed classics right to your kitchen. And right now, Freshly is offering our listeners $40 off your first two orders when you go to Freshly.com slash hard factor. Stop stressing about dinner. Go to Freshly, F-R-E-S-H-L-Y dot com slash hard factor for $40 off your first two orders. That's Freshly.com slash hard factor to get $40 off those first two orders. Good deal. Shout out. Guys, why are you carrying around credit card debt? Stop doing it. If you're like most of us, you have credit card debt. I did for a long time. It's until I got Lightstream, y'all. And those credit cards that you have, they carry a massively high interest rate. You know it. I know it. So get with Lightstream. You can lower your interest rates and save with a credit card consolidation loan from Lightstream. Now, first time I heard about a credit card consolidation loan, I was like, I don't know, man. Is that going to mess my credit up? It won't. You know what messes your credit up? Having credit card debt. So, uh, bam. <laughs> Problem it. solved. Yeah, rates start at as, as low as 5.93 APR with auto pay and excellent credit, which is insane. You can get a loan from five grand up to a hundred grand. Dang, there are no fees. And you can even get your money as soon as the day you apply. So what are you waiting for? Seriously, I know you think, oh, credit card consolidation. That means I lost the war. I shouldn't do that. It doesn't matter, man. You were never going to win the war. The credit card companies are evil. So fight back with a credit card consolidation loan. Uh, And just for our listeners, apply now and you can get a special interest rate discount and save even more. The only way to get this discount is to go to Lightstream, that's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash factor. One more time, L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M, Lightstream dot com slash factor. Quick disclaimer for you, subject to credit approval, rates range from 5.93% APR to 19.99% APR and include a 0.5% auto pay discount. Lowest rate requires excellent credit. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash factor for more information. Mm. Debt control. Bam. Uh, all right, guys. Be so nice that the government could use Lightstream once in a while, you know? Yeah. $86 billion. Can we have some? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, man. It's like a whole Jeff Bezos. All right, let's get into uh, the lightning round. One of our favorite topics on this show, fast food. Uh, you mm-hmm. know why. First up, McDonald's. A settlement, <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> a settlement has been reached uh, between uh, <laughs> some McDonald's workers and their Oakland McDonald's that they worked at. So um, apparently, I guess back in early COVID, so let's say April, May, June 2020, um, the workers of this Oakland McDonald's allegedly, according to the suit they filed, were given dog diapers with coffee filters inside of them in lieu of real COVID PPE. So <laughs> there's a picture. Yep, someone took a dog diaper, threw a coffee uh, filter in it, and said, here you go. Uh, additionally, they alleged in the uh, lawsuit that they were report- asked to report to work for uh, despite feeling ill. So they were, felt sick, and they still were told to show up. Uh, Michael Smith, who owns and someone's operates, someone's got to make the fries. Yeah, someone's got to make the fries, right? Uh, but but real quick, this, I really miss early COVID crazy shit. Like the people who were like walking around with like bubble suits on and like like bleaching themselves and like yeah. <laughs> bleaching the floor. They walk around and like yep. that. I wish that yeah. COVID would come back because that was actually cheeky in hindsight compared to the way it's actually become. The like, mask with like a fake mouth, and like someone said, put on a mask. Right. Like, yeah, wearing, like, a underwear. Mask. Yeah, yeah, they're wearing underwear in the mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, those were the days, man. I those was, were I, the days. Um, yeah, now it's not funny at all. <laughs> right now, it's people <laughs> fighting each other. <laughs> now it's two years later. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the crafty uh, franchise owner of this McDonald's, Michael Smith, who uh, owns and operates the store, denied all the accusations in his legal filings, and the settlement uh, does not issue uh an admission of wrongdoing so they settled which is great uh, but i gotta say michael uh you think these people between working full-time minimum wage jobs and fast food and worrying about like catching COVID through their shitty ppe you gave them and looking after their families they had time to dream something dream up something as specific as being given dog diapers with co- 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 coffee filters inside as COVID masks like come on dude like we know you did it mm. mm-hmm yeah, I mean, there's no defense. 
Yeah. The suit also alleges that 25 people included uh, included a worker's 10 month old child had become infected from an outbreak that emanated from the restaurant. So big oh, win for right. workers right there. Right there with the lawsuit. Cough, um, the coffee didn't prevent it. Yeah, no, didn't permit it. Coffee diaper. Uh, <laughs> this that guy, the guy who gave them the dog diaper masks definitely was like a cut up his underwear and went into a store with it on his face. Yeah, I think it was like the guy's <laughs> wife who owns the works. store probably. Like they, they won't know the difference. We got these dog diapers. We got coffee filters. Throw some rubber bands on those fuckers and slap them <laughs> on their faces. Get them to work. Yeah, I've got a I really pay for a mask. <laughs> I've got a really sick dog. I've got extra... <laughs> set of diapers at home uh let's uh let's keep it in the uh, ronald mcdonald's playscape yeah. shall we so a follow-up guys on a story we did last april which seems to have been very popular uh, as it's racked up like a million views on instagram and i'm of course talking about mcdonald's and their mick flurry saga or should i say lack thereof because the machines are always fucking broken so in an, in our initial covering of the mcdonald's story where they're perpetually out of service soft serve machines uh we talked about a tech startup called kitsch that developed a little device that allowed mcdonald's franchise owners to more easily fix the mcflurry machines by circumventing the seemingly intentionally complicated and proprietary operating system on the uh, machines that are made by taylor ice cream so essentially taylor made these things break down all the time and unable to fix them until these people made this little plug in, right? Like a little mm -hmm. USB stick you pop in there. So initially, Taylor and McDonald seemed very interested in the kitsch, whose founders, by the way, had poured their life savings into developing this device. But then they turned on the company, sending out a memo to all franchisees saying that installing a kitsch on their Taylor ice cream machine would void the manufacturer warranty, which is very bad. Uh, and on top of that, after seeing orders for their device coming in from Taylor corporate headquarters, Taylor announced that their new machines would have many of the features of the kitsch built right in, leaving the couple who started kitsch to think that maybe Taylor had reverse engineered their device. So. Essentially, they saw emails right. coming in from like, wait, wait a minute, that guy works at Taylor. And then they what if they, what if they called their device Kitsch, but like in reverse, like those the letters like Skitch, like they just like took the exact same letters yeah. in Kitsch and they yeah. just <laughs> turned and reversed it. Well, I, they pretty much did, Mark, because recently yeah. a judge awarded Kitsch with a temporary restraining order against Taylor. Yeah. Uh, forcing Taylor to return any Kitsch devices that they may, may have obtained and preventing them from using any of the Kitsch tech in their Taylor machines which means if they have already, they're going to have to undo it. So that's pretty cool. Big win for the little guy. But guys, most importantly, more importantly, the biggest impact of this lawsuit is that a judge acknowledged the validity of the suit. And within the suit, uh, Kitsch accuses Taylor of purposely using flawed code that caused the machines to malfunction wow. so they could keep their costly repair business, which was bringing in the cold, hard cash. So uh, I have a feeling that might be, maybe there's a class action suit coming against Taylor. They're going to have to get the fuck out of the business, and we're all going to get a lot more McFlurries. Oh, man. Easily. Do you think, though, if we go order a McFlurry now, and it's should we like document occasions where we have ordered McFlurries and not? Could we get in on the class action? I think it's a great idea. Well, let's go get some McFlurries. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we if, <laughs> should we go after the show's over? Should we hit up a couple Yeah, of right. That's what you're saying, right? That's, a, that's us, what I'm saying. Pat, you want us to... Uh, <laughs> right. That's what I'm Get saying. A McFlurry or two. Or... Uh, I recommend before you do that, Will, to not waste your time because you're already part of the class action lawsuit. Odds are you go yeah. to McBroken.com to see if your local McDonald's machine is broken or not. So, oh, um, yes. Thank you. I don't know if you can. Should we go get some shamrock shakes? And uh... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe do a little market <laughs> research. <laughs> Uh, Maybe honey, get in on this class action, you know? Honey, no, I got to go. It could Big Mac goes great with the McFlurry if we're already <laughs> the there. Family. Let's take it over to Chipotle, huh? Uh, okay. Things got a little spicy at a Baltimore Chipotle back on August 10th after a man complained about having to wait an additional 30 minutes for his order after he called his burrito in ahead of time, which as if you're a busy guy like me and, I'm, I, and you guys are as well, that sucks, right? You call in your order ahead and then you get there. You expect it to fucking be there. It's fast casual. Absolutely. But this, this dude had to wait an additional 30, so two times during that 30 minutes. It could have made asked, 100 burritos in 30 minutes. I know, dude, exactly. <laughs> uh, something's wrong with this Chipotle, and you're going to find out how wrong it is, really. So uh, he asked a woman behind the counter uh, twice over the course of the 30 minutes, um, and this woman happened to be the store manager. He asked her, like, what's up with my burrito? And she seemed to really not like that. She hated it. 
in fact. Uh, <laughs> and she began yelling at him. So 56-year-old Anthony Evans got his phone out and true to his age, told the woman, this is going right on Facebook because uh, he's 56. And that's when the woman gave Anthony a taste of something that isn't on the menu. She threw a pair of scissors at his face. Whoa. Oh, well, scissors to the face. Video you want to see the clip? Yes. Yes, please. How ignorant you are. You came here, you messed up my order, you messed up my order, and then I come and I complain, and you just get ignorant and start clapping your hand. I was waiting here 20 minutes, and you should have came out here and said something when I was here 20 minutes ago waiting for my order. The manager's oh, taking her phone out now. Yeah. Oh, All right. Video this going right on Facebook. Yeah. On Chipotle. <laughs> Go ahead. Is she the manager? Is she the manager? Bruh. Bruh. Is she going to get the scissors? Is she the manager? Is she the manager? Whoa! Oh. Now I'm calling the police. That's exactly who the fuck I'm calling now. <laughs> he did mm -hmm. that. I mean, that was smart, though, by the guy with the video. He knew that she was a hothead and he was going to get it. Yeah, scissor, he, he could see the scissors the whole time. <laughs> yep. Yeah. He, thought he, was, he, he was ready for him. Better like right next to the tip jar where the yep. highlighter is. Uh, <laughs> he keeps making eye contact with her and then the scissors like, and then her and then the scissors. scissors. Yeah, go oh, on, man. Go on. That, get the scissors. Uh, <laughs> that lady hates it when you uh, call into question anything that's going wrong at her it's Chipotle. Um, yeah. When officers. I mean, why arrived, don't they just make his fucking burrito? I, I guess that's a bad Chipotle. Yeah, I wouldn't go there. I guess they, I guess well, there wasn't a ton of people. Order, is what he said. So then make a new one. It takes 32 <laughs> seconds to make a burrito. <laughs> also, like. You, I don't know if you can see from the clip. The store is like empty. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Just go. Just re, what? Did, what did you order, sir? And it was at 11:47 in the morning. It was yeah. like a pride <laughs> thing. Yeah, that that was crazy. That was she just didn't want to service him. No, she and, she, and and to the point where she was going to throw scissors at him before she redid his yep. burrito. It was always going to end with scissors. <laughs> so my favorite part about this story is that when the cops showed up, the person who claimed to be the manager in the video was nowhere to be found. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. She fled. She fled. <laughs> yeah. And um, WBFF News in Baltimore reached out to the Chipotle. They gave no comment, nor has corporate. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. They owe that what guy a lot of burritos. What do they need scissors for in the front cup? I don't know. That's Chipotle. Take them What's away? Those, the throwing scissors? <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. What do you, I'm trying to think of all the products they have, and I can't think of one that requires constant use of scissors. <laughs> Like a tape, I think a tape makes sense for like bags, but I don't know. You got, I mean, it was a split, does split uh, second decision, her throwing the scissors, right? But, but they were there, no, exactly. But still, I feel like uh, scissors is one of those things that, like, even if it's split second, you know, you're reaching for scissors, right? Yes, like, there's like, don't run with scissors, <laughs> yeah, 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 right, yeah, you know, from a young hammered age, home. have you ever <laughs> seen scissors in like a I know Chipotle is a little bit different, but like, could you imagine like scissors at every cup in front of like a Wendy's or like a Burger King? That'd be no. stabbing deaths. Imagine doing it at a subway, leaving yeah. the scissors at the subway. So many like, stabbings. Yeah, yeah, lots of them. So I um, didn't get double meat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, double. Do you say double cheese? No, nope, <laughs> single cheese. Eleven forty-three in the morning, man. That guy woke up at ten thirty. At ten thirty, he thought about his lunch and figured it out. Mm-hmm. Anyway, all right, guys, let's um, finally let's make a run for the border, which if you're a Gen Z or you Bell. did not know that that was Taco Bell's slogan until about 1993. Um, first of all, guys, uh, my Taco Bell dot com has a news section. So that's now in my bookmarks. I recommend you guys do the same. Taco Bell dot com slash news. Didn't know they needed one, but <laughs> going to be checking that pretty often. Subscribe. They can't to be ratting themselves out. Though. It's probably all like hype. It's it's all hype news. It's not like, guess what happened bad in our Taco Bells? I'm just yeah. saying, man. I don't want to get it too deep into the but I bet the Taco Bell Reddit is is great. Oh, bro. <laughs> I had Taco Bell for the first time in seven, eight years uh, this week. How quickly did you shit within an hour? Uh, no, but I will say this. So I got two it meals, opens the valves, two yeah. meals, plus a bonus uh, snack because Kate was feeling ill. So bonus got, dog. She right. sent me to talk yeah. about whatever. Did she get sick as you're? No, we predicted? didn't get sick. Oh. But I got two chalupa meals and then a chicken quesadilla. Guess how much it was? Two chalupa meals and chicken quesadilla. Probably 15 bucks. Twenty five dollars. Yeah, they, Ooh, they've upped their prices. Yeah, they've upped, about. they've upped their prices for sure. Also, they have a yeah. new sauce called Diablo. I haven't. I, well, I thought fire was the hottest. Mm -hmm, not anymore. Well, Diablo. Mm -hmm. They upped it. All right, guys. So uh, anyway, Taco Bell is a news section. That's huge. Second, Taco Bell is rolling out what it's calling 
quote, the frictionless future of Taco Bell, which is saying a lot uh, because their food already moves right through you. Am I right? Um, They're calling. We just lube it up so it goes even faster. What is the frictionless (laughs) future? That's a swish. (laughs) The swish shit. (laughs) You don't need to wipe. (laughs) Did you think there was too much friction related to Taco Bell? (laughs) (laughs) Um, well, not anymore, guys. They're talking about their new Taco Bell stores uh, when they say the frictionless future. Oh, um, they're called the Taco Bell DeFi's. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I saw these like Look decentralized saw finance. These. Uh, <laughs> yeah. More like talk about yeah, defi- like more like defy your parents. Than, like, uh, defy. Is this is this like a do they shoot the food through like the um the things that they use at the bank type thing? Dude, that's exactly what they do, Mark. But they're claiming <laughs> they're, they're claiming that that it's using a quote uh, proprietary lift system elevator yeah no well, it's what it's the banks food use food elevator yeah. food elevator no. but obviously guys it's Almost. it's it's the oldest tech of all time which is pneumatic bank tubes and they're yes. shooting they're shooting the ungested no, no, diarrhea no, it's even, it's right even older than that it's even older awesome. you've been have you been to an old school restaurant two story where they where they have the 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 thing from the kitchen and they the raise waiter. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's by Thomas is. Jefferson. Yeah, yeah. Dummy waiters. They're using dumb waiters. It's proprietary. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like it's existed since like the 1600s. Yeah, uh. they're they're calling it um, the DeFi guys because it will quote defy all norms, but really it's just a four lane drive through with the kitchen uh, above the drive through and purple up lighting. Yeah, um, yeah, it's got the lights. Yeah. Can you can toss that pickup again so we can. Oh, okay. Oh my it's god! Definitely got the tubes where they get, pass you the food down. Reaching your hands into the tubes <laughs> to get Taco Bell is like the worst thing you can do during COVID. It's, it's like the shafts, the shafts are touching it and shooting it down to you. You're touching the tube that a hundred people before you that eat Taco Bell touched. They're right. not. You're like the, that's just the worst thing you can do during COVID is go to the Taco Bell tube. It's, it's just like a sick metaphor for your future. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Reach into the reception tube to yeah, grab watch it Taco shoot Bell. out the tube. <laughs> not a good idea <laughs> there's gonna be um video screens too nice. um, which i'm sure won't get like graffito tagged and scratched yeah. up by keys <laughs> the second they open yeah. <laughs> it's moving closer to the matrix where you just like get you know you get the tube you just like yeah. pull the lever on the tube and that's what you get that's what you get they don't yeah. you don't even order at taco bell you just show up and it's a randomized they're all the same items anyways it's just a tube of food shoots down just to you reach into the tube <laughs> you, you pay know that $7 and you get some sort of food in a tube you and know you, call it a day. you know if there was an arm that you could pull to get a, a mystery meal west would be there every fucking day oh, oh yeah, yeah. and he gets so arm. mad <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get, get west. Yeah. We gotta get west to get it into the Taco Bell DeFi. Oh, he'll yeah, go. Right. <laughs> they went on to say in the press release that it like it's it, it defies X and it defies Y, other than it defying uh, popular norms um, of getting fast food, whatever. So that's happening. <laughs> uh, the first one's getting rolled out in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. So if you're up right. there, let us know how that goes. I think it's going to take be a video summer. if you're up there, please. Did they partnered with like yeah. seven tech companies to, to roll this thing out? Like literally, it's like Taco Bell plus DeFi plus it's whatever. Like the, plus. It's like the Mark Zuckerberg tube from his safe his safe room. It's it's a little just, little uh, little Zuckerberg pur- shoots down at you. It's purple up lighting. That's pretty much yeah, what it it's is. It's a bank. Anyway, it's a fucking bank. It does look fancy. So um, that's going to do it for Hard Factor. Y'all, thank you so much for listening. We're thinking about the uh, veterans of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars yes, and all our service yeah. people. We love mm-hmm. you. Uh, thank you for doing what you did. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully our country can get their shit together and everyone can get out of, out of Afghanistan safe, especially the um, the Americans that are there, the journalists that are there, and the, and the people that uh, put their lives in jeopardy, oh, yeah. helping us win, well, attempt to win the war. And um, you know they're still there, so... Uh, Hopefully we can get them out safe. I saw a lot of good tweets uh, before we close it up, Pat, the, about how this is a referendum on American leadership, not not the not the boots on the ground. And I, For sure. I think you wholeheartedly agree. Holy, totally agree. The, the boots on the ground need our country to represent us a little bit better to the people we make promises to because they mm-hmm. they put their lives on the line and ultimately not um, doing the right thing or or, or handling this stuff well really is a slap in the face then in my opinion and i know a lot of them feel that way so anyway but guys it'll be a new day tomorrow um and we'll be here as we always are so make sure to have a fucking great one a day that is have a great fucking day